Hello again, I am Jim Bob and welcome back to F1 Manager 23 Hardcore Mode. We are heading to Imola tonight for round six of our first season on Hardcore Mode. So we just missed out on uh, points in Miami. Uh, just couldn't quite overcome the uh, the rain conditions, which was a little bit of a shame. I was really hoping we could maybe follow up Baku with another point or two before the rest of the grid starts to switch their engines and uh, pick up their pace a bit. But unfortunately, it was not to be. So this might be our last chance uh, to actually sneak a point or two before that happens. I'm not sure if the engines are going to get swapped over by the AI for round six. They might do in a couple of occasions. I think some of the teams will still probably stick with their existing engines. So we may have a chance. Keep my fingers crossed. How you doing, Baron? How you doing, John? How you doing, Victor? Good to see you guys. Uh, right, where are we? We're 11 days away from uh, the Grand Prix. So... Uh, let's just check parts first of all. Have I got all the parts I need? Uh, I've only got the two side pods, but that should be okay. I am manufacturing side pods at the moment anyway. Uh, I'm working on another front wing and another underfloor. So that'll take that to four and four for those. Yeah, that's it. We don't need to make any more parts. That's good. So we've got very little money, 275,000 really is not much at all uh, what do we have in development we've got a new front wing and a new rear wing and we have started some research on an underfloor got no more engineers so we can't do anything else not that we have the money to do anything else at the moment yet uh, let's check our facilities uh, where are they there they are so we are uh, not working on anything here yet uh, that would be a nice step but finances etc um, <coughs> oh, excuse me what is more important is getting the race sim up and that is one day away from hitting rank four so we'll need about eight million or so to finish that off that's quite pricey uh, but the team hub is only going to be three and a half mil so we might be able to afford that soon uh, operationally uh, we're upgrading the helipad to its final uh, level that will be done in 12 days so I don't know if that's going to affect our payout it might do we might get the slightly higher um, payout the 5% the bonus rather than the 4% because that'll go through on the Saturday and we'll get paid on the Sunday after the race so hopefully fingers crossed a little bit of extra cash it won't be a lot of extra cash but yeah <laughs> every little helps uh, when we're earning very little as it is so uh, let's uh, skip on a little bit it's the race sim done that's the spare front wing that's the spare underfloor And we've got our scouting back on Gladys. So, let's take a look at her stats compared to Dickon. So, she is worse in quite a number of categories. Very close in DRS, a little down in high speed, very much down in medium speed, you know, a little down in low speed, massively up in drag reduction, up in airflow, up in airflow management and sensitivity. So that's useful. Cooling is bad, but she's got a couple of killer stats and a lot of very average to mediocre stats. Uh, so I'm going to have to say no, I think, on that one. Let's continue our scouting. Uh, let's take a look. Actually, Sari's even worse. Look, she's only a 73. She's not going to be any better. I think... Martin Vernon might be not a bad option in the end. Yeah, 
Yeah. We're still waiting on uh, our results, our, our scouting results on uh, on these three here. Uh, there's ten days to go on those, so uh, no immediate uh, decision is going to be made. But yeah, useful to have a little look see. Uh, right, let's scout Mr. Fallows. We tried to sign him at the beginning of the season and we couldn't get him, uh, so uh, we'll actually get a scout result on him, and we'll also scout. Uh, Tarek as well uh, once we get a, a free scout in 10 days time we'll take a look at him see if uh, if he's going to work out uh, we can also look at uh, Mauro Ferrara and uh, Diana Romano as well uh, those two aren't too far away from where Jody is but are significantly younger so they could be a good long term investment perhaps uh, right moving on That was one of our side pods that went through there, so we've got a spare side pod now. And it's time for our targets. So let's take a look at our car performance going into this Grand Prix. Uh, we are 17th in speed still, 17th in DRS still, not great there. Uh, cornering, pretty bad. Our dirty air tolerance is now the worst on the grid. That's really not good. Uh, let's take a look at who we're in competition with. So, uh, we should be better overall than Alpha, and we are. Uh, better speed, much better acceleration, better downforce. Uh, pretty much better everywhere that we need to be. Uh, let's take a look at McLaren. Norris might be a bit of a stretch, but uh, Piastri should be easy to, to pick off. And there we can see Piastri's car actually is looking pretty rough. A little bit quicker than us, slightly better DRS, but very, very worse downforce settings there. Is that just on his car? No. Well, actually, I think there's a difference in downforce settings between the two McLarens there. There is. So, Norris doesn't have quite as much top speed. It's slightly less. Uh, DRS is the same, he's got a fractionally better acceleration and he's definitely got better downforce. So it looks like Norris has got uh, an upgrade on his car. Engine cooling is bad, I wonder if Norris needs to replace a, uh, a side pod, we've seen that before. So maybe when that side pod goes on it'll improve the engine cooling but bring those other stats down a touch. So maybe Norris's car is in line. Uh, let's go back to us. Where are we? There we go. And let's take a look at Williams. Uh, yeah, Williams are going to walk all over us, I think. Yeah, much faster than us. Better DRS, which is important here. Terrible acceleration, but better downforce. Yeah, I can see us struggling, maybe, against Williams. Uh, we'll take a quick look at Haas as well. Similar to Williams. Again, might be a bit of a struggle. Uh, we'll see. We're going to be a little more conservative with the uh, performance targets again tonight. So, let's see. He wants both cars in Q3. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> ah, dear. One in the top 15 and one in Q2. There we go. Fastest lap. Um, probably won't happen. Uh, finish position. One in the top 15. Yeah, I think that's... A safe bet and then we've got a finish position streak one in the top 15 for two races uh, we'll go with one in the top 15 for five races I just hope that Yuki can pull that one off and we are ready to head to Imola welcome along to Italy and welcome along to Imola. After returning to the Formula One calendar in 2020, Imola is now home to the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. This historic track's original outline might remain, but updates to the circuit ensure that racing here feels just as exciting in modern times. Imola has no fewer than four chicanes, with the Variantes putting a slow speed corner into every sector around this historic circuit. It's a high downforce track with sharp turns breaking up the straights. 
In the last round, Max Verstappen flew to victory. The Dutchman proving that he can be absolutely unstoppable when he's in such fine form. What will happen this weekend? Only time will tell. All right, no bad weather to worry about. Just got a little bit of cloud. Uh, we are going to be putting Liam L L L L I can't remember his name. Liam Lawson back in the car tonight, uh, and it's our first ATA weekend of the season as well. So. Uh, that'll make qualifying a little bit more interesting. Right, let's take out Nick DeVries. Let's put in Liam Lawson. And uh, we're going to go with... Medium tyres. And we'll go 20 laps for Imola. Drop that pace down. There we go. And setups. So, <clears throat> I've got a few to choose from. We'll start with a 7, a 12.5, a 3.7, a 3.5, and a 0.10. There we go. Uh, oh, let's do car parts as well. Before I forget. Uh, so we'll go with the older engines. Didn't we buy... A new ERS. But did I only buy it for one? I might have only bought it for one car. Uh, I could have sworn I bought those. Uh, right, uh, Yuki. Uh, we'll go with hard tyres for Yuki. Let's check his car parts. So he has to be on that engine. No choice in that one because that one's dead. Uh, yes, we did buy an, 80, uh, uh, an ERS for, for Yuki. Okay, so I knew I bought something. And again, I've got to go with that gearbox because that one's toast as well. Uh, 20 laps of fuel, dropping those pace stats. And now let's make a setup for Sonoda. Let's go with... Hmm, choices, choices. Go with a 7, 12.5, 4, 6, and 3.50. Oh. Actually, let's go with the 6.5, 12, 5, 4, 6, 3.50, and a 0. There we go. All right, let's send them out to practice. How close am I to getting fired? <laughs> Nowhere near. <clears throat> I am doing really well. <laughs> I'm in like sixth or seventh in the constructors really at the moment because we've managed to score some very early points. That's not going to last, but we should be safe from getting fired. As long as we don't destroy our cost cap, we should be fine. The real question is how long can we stay semi-competitive work on the PU cool copy Sign Nanny Rick. Um, he goes against the rules of hardcore mode. Uh, those rules are in the video description. And they govern, you know, when we can break contracts, you know, the maximum age and maximum skill rating of drivers that we can sign.
plus. The amount of money I'm going to have to spend to sign him, not worth it. Feedback. 91%. That's not bad. Let's call him in. And 96% for Yuki. That's nice. That's a good start. What is the limitation, Yuki? Now, let, let me keep this one. Copy. So, what do we need to change? It's the roll bar, so I'm guessing that's going to be 4-6. So, we just need to correct our camber. Uh, I'm going to go to a 6-13. No. Don't need to change the rear wing. Let's go to a 6.5, a 12.5. A 3.5 and a 0. So this is the setup that we've got on uh, Sonoda's car. Let's try it on this one. I think that's correcting pretty much everything we need to be wearing. I'm going to pull that in actually one click. Go to a 3.4, 3.45. And we'll see if that works. Do I sign Lawson to replace De Vries? No, he's my reserve driver. So, just need a little tweak here. Uh, front wing needs to be tweaked. I'll try pushing that. Which way do I push it? Let's try a seven. Pull that in. And we'll add an extra click of toe as well. And let's give that a go. How is Giovinazzi uh, top? Probably on softs. No, he's on hards. Uh, he won't be there for very long. Most cars aren't haven't been out for very long by the look of it uh, in fact actually looking at that Giovinazzi has not done 12 laps on those tires I don't think uh, so I think that's a tire he set a time he set on softs uh, yeah there we go see he set that time on softs now he's on hards and again Giovinazzi is just in for this for this session uh, he is the Ferrari reserve Good morning. No, this would be 
it should be morning, I think. Oh no, it is afternoon, it's quarter past two, so... Um, yeah, they do use AI drivers, just not very often. You know, maybe once or twice a season, if that. And not all teams either, I don't think. How was that one? All right, 97%, so getting closer. Not quite there yet. And that's an easy fix, so that is gonna be a 3.5. Pull that back. See, find that out in the next session. We're not going to run Lawson again today. That's his weekend done. And we got it right from Yuki. Excellent stuff. done in practice one. Just got to wait out the last minute. There we go. And now we'll get Nick DeVries back in the car. So, uh, hard tyres for Nick DeVries. Let's give him a lot of laps of fuel. We're going to give him 44 laps of fuel. Yuki, we're going to run him on mediums and we're going to run him for 30 laps. And let's send them out. Pretty nice, A bit less curb. How is the breeze getting on? Uh, okay not stellar uh not up to the pace of uh, yuki has moments when he can be you know good but his pace is a little inconsistent Uh, don't worry about the time difference there. It's 1.6 seconds, 1.7 seconds, but they're on different fuel loads and different tyre compounds. With different engine performance as well. Practice times mean nothing. got a yellow flag gap between them is new usually around about three four tenths in that region depends on the circuit sometimes it's less sometimes it's more how is the car and boom another 100 percent setup so we are Good to go with that, we just need to get their track knowledge up now.
Okay, so now this run should be coming to an end soon. Yep, there we go. Perfect. And the breeze should be good to the end of the session. Just before the end of the flag. Good evening, Mr. Water. Uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I'll be playing Robocop. See when does it go live? Uh, for me, screen's going to go blue for a second. Uh, Twelve and a half hours. That's when it uh, unlocks for me. It pre-installed last night. Uh, it officially releases on the 2nd of November, but uh, I went for the Alex Murphy edition, so I'm a pre-order, so I get an extra 48 hours with the game as a result. I think it's only the Alex Murphy edition that you get the extra 48 hours. I don't think pre-ordering the standard edition will get you that extra two days. You get something else where you get like a digital art book and some extra little bits and bobs um, on top. And it's only a fiver difference. You know, to me, that's worth it. You know, for the soundtrack, uh, well, not the soundtrack, sorry, the art book and, and the extras, you know, they're worth a fiver, I think. And the extra 48 hours is a nice little bonus on top. So, uh, yeah, I should, be, uh, I should be hammering that tomorrow. I'll still be streaming F1, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll probably record a couple of hours worth of footage and upload those as videos. It's been a while since I've done that. out for that extra couple of minutes do i play football manager i tried just i couldn't get into it you know, i enjoy football i enjoy you know uh, management games i just i don't know i just felt a little overwhelmed in that just a little out of my depth i've still got it on my hard drive i do keep meaning to pick it back up again and give it another crack try and figure it out i guess i'm gonna have to do a bit of research watch a few different videos and try and get into the swing of it but uh, practice coming up we're going to go medium tires with both drivers save those softs for uh, quality in the race because uh, we only get the three sets I think for me the problem with F1 man uh, not F1 man sorry football managers just it's been so long since I've played a game like that that I'm just out of the loop now when it comes to how that game has moved on I mean the last time I played a football manager game was back when it was still called championship manager 
uh, before there was the split. And the guys that created the Championship Manager series split off and created Football Manager. And Championship Manager lived on as a separate entity and didn't do very well. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was the last time I played a Football Manager game, I, you know, Championship Manager. And, uh, you know, back in the days of like LMA Manager on PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, I think it was PlayStation 2. So, yeah, it's been a long time since I've played a Football Manager game. And, yeah, they just, they've just moved on. And I haven't stayed in the loop. So. is done. Let's call him in. The Reese isn't too far off himself. We are done with practice, so just run out the clock and then we're heading off to qualifying. session nice and simple practice for us this weekend got the setups now very very quickly luckily the setup windows are very very narrow for Imola you know a lot of the setups are very very similar so it's quite easy to find the 100 at this circuit and you generally need to pick one of many different setups in the book I've got uh, I've got seven baseline setups and then two of those have got a slight variation recorded for them as well. And you know, most of those are very, very similar. So you can pick any one of those and uh, you're usually very, very close. You just need to make the slightest little tweaks. Welcome to qualifying. Let's find out if all that practice will pay off for the drivers. Alternative tyre allocation rules apply this time round. That means each team has to tackle Q1 on the hard compound tyres, Q2 on mediums, and Q3 on soft. Karun, there's Yuki Sonoda. How would you describe things for him at the moment? It hasn't been a great showing from the team's drivers so far. Neither will want to be left behind, and I'm sure they'll both be looking to pull ahead today. There's not much left to say, so let's get into it. I might have to break out a P45. Someone there tagging my car in the background. One of those mechanics is getting fired. <laughs> 
Right. Put the good stuff back in the car. Well, the decent stuff. Two flying laps. And let's see what we can do. So we'll send out the breeze first. Two. Should be great. In theory, our drivers should be uh, a little bit closer together in terms of pace now because. Snowden's running his engine down very quickly, considering he's having to use it in practice as well. Whereas De Vries has got that older engine to flip in for practice. So these two engines started life at the same percentage, and Yuki's is already down to below 70%, and De Vries's is still at 87. Yeah, that's how much wear and tear you can put on the car. You know, when you have to run the same engine through practice as well. Runs out very quickly. So let's prepare the lap. Okay. I've left quite so much of a gap between our two drivers. So, uh, <laughs> both of our cars are slower than the Williams. That's Albon. If it's Sergeant, that's not good. <laughs> All right, debris up to the line. It is Sergeant. Ah, oh, okay. What was Debris's time? Oh, he's only off by two thousandths of a second. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, let's see what Yuki can do. He's a way off. Still, another lap to go after this cool down lap. So, fingers crossed. Improvement. Let's check our confidence levels. So, Yuki's now very high. Brees is on the cusp of peak confidence. So we should see an improvement from both drivers on this uh, second floor in that they do. He's getting out of the way of Piastri there.
So we should be good on traffic. Just go. One concern I do have about this Grand Prix is that our dirty air is charge off. Our dirty air performance is really bad. Really bad. Worst on the grid now. So we need those new wings. And we need them, you know, too sweet. Improvement for Nick DeVries in the first sector. That's a slow lap for Hamilton. Very slow lap for Hamilton. Improvement for Debris. Comfortably in peak confidence now. Yuki has improved in the first sector as well. Good. So, how much closer can Nick get? He comes around the final corner, up to the line. And he improves. He finds about a tenth. Yuki should get a big improvement here from Yuki. And he finds six tenths of a second. Excellent. So just three thousandths of a second between our two drivers. And that might be enough to get us through. We're going to go again at the end of the session. That's not it for our running, but uh, that's a Pretty strong starting block. So we'll go out with about six and a half minutes to go. Please don't get in the way, Bottas. No, he's too far back. Excellent stuff. Right. De Vries starts his next flying lap. Gee, we've got some traffic at the start of the lap first and over here. We've gone out of the way quickly for Bottas. Let's hope he'll do the same for us. Up just a little bit. Have to take a, a narrow line into Tosa. No improvement for either driver so far. stays where he is. I don't think Sonoda's going to improve here either. Nope. Okay, we're going to be out ahead of a big group of cars. That's good. 
touch wood, we're not going to have any issues with traffic on this next lap, but not sure we'll see an improvement on that one either. At the moment, it's good enough to get us through, though. Looking to see who's likely to improve. Uh, Magnussen? Norris, maybe? Gasly, maybe? I think. He might be okay. Oh, this could be a problem. <laughs> We've got uh, Perez behind us. He's going to be hounding us on the entire lap. Clear ahead. You're good to go. Straight out, track is clear. This is in lap. Oh, that's Perez's lap ruined. I think it might have hurt Debris as well. No improvement in the first. A little bit of traffic coming through that first chicane with Sonoda, so he might not improve in the first either. Nope. Don't need something special if we are going to improve. And I don't know if we need to, but it would be nice just to have that little safety cushion. Uh, De Vries still not improving. I not take him too much out of his tyres now. Four debris. I doubt we'll see one with uh, Sonoda either. But it's enough to get us through as things stand. Magnussen has improved. He's 14th, so he's still slower than us. That's him done as well. P13, Nayuki. P13. Oh, Albon's cutting it close. This is in love. He's cutting it very close. Is he going to make it? Albon's out. He didn't get over the line in time. <laughs> he got held up quite badly. So, um, yeah, he doesn't get across the line in time to start the flying lap. He is out. Sergeant is uh, finished. Magnuson's done. He's on an in lap. Norris is on the main lap. Piastri's on an out lap. He's on a hot lap. Can he uh, can he find something? He's gonna have to find a hell of a lot to knock us out. I think we're safe. Yeah, he's the only one yet to cross the line. So we're safe. And he doesn't improve, so Piastri is also out, along with Norris, Bottas, Joe, and Alex Albon. Right, practice two, not cute practice two, qualifying two. Uh, once again, we are going to go with two flying laps, but I think I might have a set of scrubs that I can use here. Nope, I don't. Okay. Just got the one set. I'm just going to do one flying lap. And then we'll do a second flying lap at the end if we need to. Which we'll probably need to. Alright, send out Nick DeVries first. Front of 
into the Red Bull. Yes, I can. So focus on your tyres and brakes. Copy. And focus on tyres and brakes. Copy. Not sure if I'm going to two stop this race. Might one stop it. Might split the strategy. Go two stop with Yuki, one stop with Debris. Nice big gap ahead. Not sure. Okay, go now, go now. There is no racer in front of you. Charge off and push. Looks like we're going to come across Hamilton. He's still on the warm-up. We've got a Magnussen in front of us as well. De Vries has already cleared him. Through nice and cleanly there. Just cut to De Vries. That's Hamilton just disappearing in the distance. We might be okay here. He should start picking up speed now, so... Yeah, we're not going to catch him. That's good. It's not going to affect our laps. And that Red Bull is not as close to us as I thought it would be. Maybe he got held up. Getting past the Haas of Magnussen. Delta, stay negative. Cool the car on the way in. Got it. Oh wow, big oh, difference in lap time. Is Something happened to De Vries. Where did he lose all that time? Middle sector. He lost half a second in the middle sector, so... Maybe he got held up by Hamilton. No, not Hamilton. Maybe he got held up by Magnussen. Uh, yeah, a second slower. Uh, let's go to flying laps. Give these tyres everything. First lap will be probably the better of the two, but maybe we can squeeze a little bit more out on the second lap. Tyres might have given up by then. So that's currently sitting in the top 10, but that's because Sainz and Alonso have yet to set a time. There is Alonso setting a time, goes fifth. Sainz coming up to the line in a moment. We need a big improvement here from Nick of Good to go. He is a long way off the pace. Is 
clear. Charge off and push. That compromised us a little bit there in terms of our line, but at least we didn't have to lift out. Is that Ferrari pulled out of the way? Look how close the top five are at the moment. Less than 300 separating the top five drivers. That is close. That's very close. No improvement for Sonoda in the first sector, but the Vries is up. Ah, damn it. Stroll got in the way. Was that Alonso? One of the uh, Astons. A little lift for De Vries there. That'll compromise his uh, final sector. And he stays last. How far off the pace is he? 115.5. He's two tenths away from Sargent. So he found three tenths of a second. No, it's not enough. Nowhere near enough. Need more. Let's take a look at confidence levels. So, Reese into peak confidence. That'll help. So no, they're not quite in there. There is a chance that we can see a bit more improvement from, uh, from Nick De Bruce on this next lap. But, uh, I think unless he can pull out something special, he's only really going to be in contention with Sargent. He's about six tenths down on Rosenberg at the moment. to bunching. Go one. Oh, this could be messy. A lot of cars coming out the pits. This could be very messy. Oh, that's it. The Reese is out. No point even trying to call him in. Maybe Yuki can get a bit luckier. Oh, look at that mess. And that's it for Sonoda as well. That big lift there just killed any chance he had of improving. Ah, so we're out in Q2, but both guys in Q2, just. I was looking forward to uh, maybe being able to sneak one car through and attack on soft, but never mind. It was not to be. It's race day, and final preparations are underway. Imola can really reward consistency, as Nigel Mansell showed here in 1992, when he became the first driver to ever win the opening five Grand Prix of a season. Now, Karun, what do you think Nick de Vries will be feeling ahead of this race? I don't think there can be any real complaints over their performance so far. They know what's expected of them, and they're making sure to deliver. Meanwhile, in the grandstands, the red wave is swelling. Who will come out on top here in Imola? Well, 
Right, let's have a look at strategy. So we could go with a two stop. Is it quicker? It's the same. Uh, we could probably squeeze a little bit more out of this one, perhaps. All right, well, we'll uh, things are the same. We may as well go with the two stop and just try and get some extra pit crew training or, you know, pit crew experience. See if we can maybe pull out a couple of quick stops, give us a better chance in the uh, competition at the end. Uh, do I want to take fuel out? You know what? No, I just want to push the fuel nice and hard at the start, I think going to attack with everything we're not going to hold back in terms of the battery we're just going to go full bore and see if we can maybe make up a position or at least stay with the the, uh, the front of the pack for a, a few laps before we inevitably get dropped right let's go racing here in Imola the drivers are ready to take on the 63 laps of the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix now I wonder, will things be going Lando Norris's way in this race? For P17, you know, they could try and be clever here, and then who knows what they could manage. So let's see what today has in store, shall we? The crowd are on their feet in anticipation of this, the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. And it's lights out, and away we go! So both the Red Bulls are on softs. They're going to try and break away very quickly. The Ferraris, the Astons on mediums. Do your best. Yeah, come on. A bit congested in front of us. Can we maybe try a lunge? Yes. There we go. Got past Gasly. We want to try and get in front of these medium runners while we can. Yes, yes, yes. Very good job. So we are in uh, 11. Uh... <laughs> Magnussen making the move on Hamilton and we nearly collected uh, that Mercedes then. Trying to sell Hamilton a dummy. Can we take advantage? Can we get our wheels alongside? Nope. Might get him here though. Up the inside at Tosa. And I think we got him. Yes, we did. Excellent, we're up to 10. Okay, good job. It's the Vries all over the back of Sargent in the background there. Can't find a way through this yet. Right, can we get in front of Magnuson? Yeah, throw it up the inside. Good job, Yuki. And that is just going to be out of battery, I think. Just about. But we got the move done. Excellent stuff. Right, let's calm those tyres down a touch. Ah, we just... 
just not quite there against Magnussen. Couldn't hold the position. Keep pushing. Might have a look at the inside though. Not quite. Racing start from uh, Sonoda here. We hadn't run out of battery when we did. Who knows? We might have been able to actually pull that out. So now we're just going to settle in. Let's see how Nick DeVries is doing. He's still stuck behind Sargent, but soft tyres against soft tyres. Can't have that immediate grip advantage that Sonoda did compared to uh, the mediums of Hamilton and Gasly. Check the gaps. Sergeant might be getting dropped at the end of this lap. Uh, you can been dropped already. Wow, that didn't take long. And we've got Hamilton all over the back of us now. Now Hamilton throws it up the inside at Tosa and he's going to retake that place. It's okay. Disappointing, but given that that's a Mercedes, I can't really complain about that too much. Well, I could, but it wouldn't be justified. Let's see if we can stay with Hamilton. Trying to break away from us. Just about hanging on to the back of his DRS there. Sergeant is still hanging off the back of Hulkenberg, which is keeping De Vries where he is. And uh, yeah, despite having a DRS, Hamilton's gone. <laughs> it's just... All right. Had to, see, had to sort of expect that, I suppose. Cooling down. Let's see if we can maybe start thinking about saving some battery with Nick De Vries. I'm going to cool his tyres down a touch before they start melting. I'm so worried the fact he's about to get dropped as well. Keep pushing. Gasly's through now as well. If you need uh, yeah. Bad to worse here. So we need to back off. All those uh, positions we made at the start just coming undone. Bring the pack up. Copy that. No more overtake. Copy that. So the question now becomes who's on what strategy. Softs are probably going to two-stop, and mediums could go either way. They could two-stop, they could one-stop. Theoretically, the softs could one-stop as well, but I think that's probably a bit unlikely. Depends. If they go on the hard tyre when they make their first stop, then that could be their one and only stop. Finally, the tyre temps are down, and Sergeant is now out of DRS range. 
but uh, we'll take this opportunity to put a little bit more battery back in the car, considering we had to spend it just to stay in range earlier. Let's fill that back up a touch. Gasly's now out of range of Hamilton. And he turns on, he turns on. Having clawed his way up there for a second. So now we'll try and harvest his head for a bit. We'll manage these gaps now, make sure we don't get dropped. good acceleration it means that out of that final chicane we're actually in pretty decent shape So let's go into top-up mode now. Norris has got past Albon, so he could be uh, rocking up onto the back of us pretty soon. So let's try and save a little bit more battery with the grease, because if we can get past Sargent, we can get straight onto Hulkenberg. So let's just go for it this lap. Before we turn that fuel down because uh, Norris is coming and Debris is slipping a little. Close, see if we can get him uh, up the inside at Tosa. Oh, we might get him before then, actually. Not quite, he just cuts across us there. Goes to the inside, gets alongside, and then battery up the hill. Should see us through. And we are through. Excellent stuff. You keep coming under a lot of pressure from Hulkenberg right now. We keep pushing with Nick Debris to see if we can maybe jump onto the back of that. Sonoda's now vulnerable. I've got to push him. Can Debris stay in range before he runs out of battery? Oh, I don't think he can. I think we missed it. Yeah, we missed it. All right. Lift it coast. Copy. How about Falkenberg for now? Having rebuilt those batteries, we've had to drain them immediately, and now we've got to be careful. <laughs> The hardest thing about having a rubbish car is trying to rebuild your battery because you can lose so much performance when you do it. And if you don't have a lot of performance to begin with, it just makes it so easy to get back. Recharge. 
John charge on. Copy. Right, we'll leave Yuki in pop up now, and he's got a chance here to maybe make a move on Gasly. is holding Sergeant at bay. Not able to drop him completely, but keeping him at arm's length at the moment. Tyres are below the line. Let's look at just shortening those, that first stint. Do the same for Yuki as well. at the front have really, you know, hit those tyres hard to try and break away. And they have done to an extent. I mean, they're four seconds ahead of uh, Stroll and Sainz and Leclerc and, and Alonso and Russell. That's, that's quite a little train, actually. Let's it's, it's jump into the middle of that. Aston's still looking very strong at this point of the season. as well so obviously the Red Bulls on those softs are probably going to be too stopping I would imagine Sainz and Stroll might be too stopping Leclerc and Alonso could maybe be one stopping just going off the tie wear at this early stage it's sort of a little bit of guesswork at this stage Meanwhile, we're uh, almost having dropped Hulkenberg from the back of Sonoda. Uh, and it looks as though Gasly's trying to sprint. So we're going to push our battery to try and make sure, A, we don't get dropped, and B, see if we can actually drop Hulkenberg in the process. It looks like he's pushing at the same time as well. Might have done. Might have just dropped him. It's very close. The DRS detection is where the curving starts on that downhill run on the left-hand side. It's uh, very tricky to see exactly that. I think he missed it. Can't quite tell. Did he get it? No, he got it. Damn it. Charge on, charge on. So 12th and 14th. Okay. The Vries still holding off Logan. He's energy now. Copy. Push a bit more. Copy. Gasly. Who has caught up to Hamilton. Stay close to the car in front. I have to push Yuki. No DRS available, no DRS available. Copy.
focus on bringing the pack back up. Copy. battery now I think that's it managed to break away from Hulkenberg a little bit though so not all bad I was just hoping I could have gone onto the back of Gasly Hamilton and Magnuson pulled along at a slightly quicker pace Sargent's looking a little racy behind the pace as well Try and pass this on this lap. Yeah, we are bleeding time right now. Slow down. Okay. Push De Vries' tyres hard because we're going to box him in a couple of laps. life out of these tyres now and uh, short stint this, uh, this set of softs with a view to maybe getting an undercut on a couple of cars on fresh mediums we just won't be able to push the mediums otherwise we're going to end up struggling to make them last long enough to uh, be have any kind of effective pace on the uh, second set of softs. We don't have another set of mediums to go on to. We've only got the one set, so be wary of that. Plenty well, of softs, though. So if we get onto the mediums and then we get a red flag, we're straight back onto soft again, and then it's soft left for the rest of the race. You know, we've still got two or three more sets of softs. We've almost gone off the back of Hogenberg, actually. <laughs> Not too bad. How much things can change very quickly in the space of just a couple of laps. But three laps ago, Magnussen was ahead of Hamilton uh, and Gasly, and now he is a second and a half off of Gasly, and Gasly is two and a half seconds off of Hamilton. Hamilton just took off, and Magnussen just dropped a stone. Back off now. Yeah. 
Cover. Using the pit main. Hey, Finn. Hey, you can push. Oh, and Sergeant's boxing this lap as well. Charge on. Copy. We box, box. 2.7. Decent. We kept position. That was important. Oh, and Sergeant's gone soft again, so he has to stop again for mediums. Uh, can we get out ahead of Joe? Yes, we can just. Joe hasn't stopped yet. So hopefully those tyres aren't going to be enough of a threat to uh, get past we need us. To focus on the energy now. Copy that. No saving required. Yeah, copy that. And we're frustrating Hulkenberg here. Yeah, copy. And he's staying out. The entry. Copy. All right, let's have a clean stop here. Two point five. It's not bad. It's not amazing, but it will do. Shook it out just in front of uh, Nick De Vries here. There he is. drivers back together. Now let's see if once De Vries is, no, sorry, wants to know to get those tyres at the temp, see whether he can start to uh, pull De Vries along a little bit. I'm hopeful that the dirty air will not be too bad. where it doesn't overheat the Bruce's tyres as well. Bring the pack up. Hey, sir. Make sure those tyres don't Take melt. easy in the fast corners. Copy. And now we just have to kind of play a bit of a waiting game. Make sure that our drivers stay close. Wait and see what the rest of the field does. So let's check in with that big train at the front here behind Stroll. Two Ferraris squabbling with each other. Alonso and Russell just keeping the watch on the brief at the moment. Hamilton's up to eighth place now. He's going in front of Ocon. He's nine seconds off the back of this train.
pushed his tyres 29%. Max is a only fraction better. We're going to start seeing a flurry of pit stops, probably starting with Max. <laughs> they might double stack them here, actually. Sergeant's finally got past Joe and pulling away very quickly. Joe yet to stop. He is on those softs, so he'll be on the back of us pretty quickly, but he has had to burn quite a bit of his tyres just getting past Joe. Which is why it was so important for us to hold him off. And there goes Max. So Perez has got to do another lap on knackered tyres. Russell's coming in as well. It's hard tyres, so that might be a one-stop for Max. Probably will be a one-stop. Central Russell. Good stop. an issue for Hulkenberg. This one, excellent Karun. news. The Can we jump him as a result of that? Ah, oh, there's been a problem there. And he's going hard tyres, so that's him to the end, potentially. You will deploy as much as you can. Yes, we have jumped Hulkenberg, and we're still ahead of Norris as well. Sergeant's jumped them as well. Giving a little bit of battery push now that people are starting to box. See if we can maybe pick up our pace and such. Perez is in now. Hard tyres for Perez, so he's going to the end by the look of it. is pushing, he's just clinging on to us at the moment despite us using our battery coming up on the back of Piastri who I think is yet to stop yep, Piastri yet to stop not going to get the DRS this lap that move Hamilton made on Charles yesterday took some balls, yeah it was, uh, it was a very good move. It's really good to have seen Hamilton back to his sort of uh, racing best uh, over these last couple of races. You know, putting some good moves together, you know, showing some real pace. You know, he's feeling more confident in the cars. It's, I'm, I'm really hopeful that he'll be able to mount some kind of challenge next season. A load of flies past Piastri there. Can the Vries get through quickly as well? Let's go. You're doing well. So he's a P13, 1-3. Can have a look at the inside of the chicane, maybe. Nope. Ah, now Sergeant's all over the back of us. Come on, let's get this move done. Tires, no wonder. 
Tsunoda got out in front of Magnussen just. Magnussen's tyres will take a moment to warm up. But he's on hard, so he's going to the end. So that was vital for Tsunoda to get out in front of Magnussen. Because hopefully he will have more pace. And there we go, De Vries now finally getting the move done. Should be in range, hopefully, of Magnussen on the start-finish straight. No, we missed it. Focus on bringing the pack back. Up. Ah, Magnussen is in DRS range. Ah, damn it! I was hoping we could break away from him before his tyres warmed up. He's going to be aggressive as well. He's going to be pushing hard. That's not a good idea to go into harvest, I don't think. Charge on. On. Trying to slow Magnuson down and with the hope that we can get Debris in here as well. Plus if Magnuson gets me before the DRS detection point, which he did, that's the detection point just there. Uh, we'll now get DRS off the back of him. I can't believe it is. Keep pushing. Aston Martin's pace fall off is terrifying. Well, no, not... I mean, it's not great. It really isn't great. But we've seen that happen before. Charge on, charge on. Um, with other teams in the past uh, where Haas remember a couple of seasons ago Magnussen's first season back at Haas in the points looking uh, looking really impressive and then their pace just fell away because they had a really good car at the start of the season and then it went backwards the rest of the year and that's exactly what's happened with Aston it took them a little longer to go backwards but yeah um, it's not the first time we've seen something like that Yuki, don't get dropped. Stay with him. Use deploy. Use deploy. I have to squirt yeah. a little battery to do it. I'll squirt a little battery. There you go. Uh, so yeah, it's not the first time we've seen that. And yeah. sometimes teams will just find a concept. Um, They'll, they'll go with it and they'll think it's it and they'll think there's loads of performance to find with this new concept and it turns out that they pretty much nail it the first time out and there's nowhere for it to go uh, Renault did that with their um, exhaust blown gassing and uh, you know they hit that out of the park you know they had this concept they went with this concept they they figured they would be able to find a lot more performance as they continue to evolve it and it, what it turned out was that they pretty much got the most out of it with their first attempt and, and there wasn't really anywhere for it to go uh, and so it gave them a nice ledge at first before other teams started doing it and then when they couldn't then develop it any further and other teams started doing it and that advantage was gone and their pace just dropped down again uh, so these things happen uh, yeah, I think Aston will be strong again at the start of next season if they get the concept right. But it's a question of whether they can sustain it over the season. Yeah, they probably spent quite a lot of money uh, and um, you know very early in the season with their development and then just maybe ran out of finances in terms of the cost cap and couldn't bring any real significant upgrades. I mean, they brought some that just haven't seemed to work as well. Teams will sometimes take that wrong turn. We have seen that in the past as well. 
Do I not think it was a bit suspicious how the AlphaTauri had pace out of nowhere? No, I think that's down for more to Ricardo um, being able to drive the way he knows how to drive. I mean, the car has, uh, has improved this season for Alpha Tower. It's not the horrific car it was at the start of the season. It has improved as the season's gone on. And, you know, we've seen points for Sonoda on a few occasions in the last half dozen races or so. Or, you know, points, you know, con points contention. Uh, and don't forget, Lawson got points, you know, on, on just his second race. So... It's not that far off, you know, where it was, you know, not so long ago, just a few races ago. So, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not that suspicious about their sudden pace because, I mean, it was a blinder of a lap that Ricardo did in qualifying, but he didn't really have that pace in the race. But it was great to see a little, a little sparkle of, of, of Danny Rick coming back. Yeah, Mercedes is another prime example of a team just getting a concept wrong. You know, going down a rabbit hole and you know in the wrong direction. And not being able to correct it until it's too late. They did the same thing this season. They realized pretty much straight away once they did their first preseason test that, you know, they they were bullish about it. They they thought, you know, we can make this work. You know, we've learned from what we did last season. They went with a, a, you know, a refined version of last season's con concept for this year, and uh, you know, it became pretty evident, you know, pretty evident uh, straight away that it just wasn't the right way to go. You know, uh, they went down the rabbit hole, and uh, it took them too long to, to realise it. You know, they made that mistake, and by the, the first race of the season, they already said that they were writing that concept off for the rest of the season. Danny Rick will get the Perez seat. Well, maybe not next year, but he's certainly going to be going for it in 2025, I think. You know, uh, I think next season could well be Perez's last season with Red Bull, assuming that they don't get rid of him before the end of his contract. Everyone in front of us is going to the end. And everyone behind us, apart from Bottas and Sargent, is going to the end. Looking a little ominous. I don't think we're getting points tonight. Noteworthy what the McLaren race engineer said about Russell. I, I, yeah, I think that's a little... A little misleading. Um, I get what you mean, but I mean, I would say that you know, maybe not so much this year because he's not had to. But you know, you go back a couple of seasons to 2021 to the Snappen, way more aggressive than Russell has been this year. You know, when when a driver feels like he has to push. Uh, and throw the car into corners just to try and make a chance, uh, make a move because he doesn't feel confident in the equipment underneath him, or he, he, he's he's confident in the equipment but not confident in the outright pace of the car. Drivers will take risks. Apart from some silly mistakes, why do I think Perez has struggled? I think he, he got in his own head. Um, I think as much as Red Bull like to present an image of 
you know, they like to treat their drivers equally. They don't. And they haven't for a very long time. And I think they put too much pressure on him at a time when he needed more of an arm around his shoulder at one point. And it got he got in his own head and put a lot more pressure on himself than you know he could maybe handle. I don't know, I mean I'm I'm speculating. You know, only Perez can answer that question. You know, and, and then it's up to you whether or not you believe the answer that he gives you. But yeah, I mean, from the outside looking in, I can only speculate, but I mean, I think, you know, he's been under a lot of pressure at Red Bull. Carl Marco hasn't helped. Uh, the team is obviously always going to back their golden boy, Max, and Max will do whatever he wants, even when the team ask him, you know, to help out with Perez, like at the end of last season. He won't. <laughs> um, so there's, there's a, there's a, there's a grudging respect between the two drivers, but I don't think it's a two-way street. I think Max takes Checo for, uh, for granted that he will just do whatever he wants him to do. Um, and I don't think Perez likes that. Yeah, like I said, I'm just, I'm just, you know, speculating. I, I can't say for definite, but. Red Bull is not an, uh, an environment that seems to be conducive to happy teammates. Because they inevitably favour one car very heavily over the other. That was, uh, in the days when they had Vettel and Weber, it was Vettel. And Weber clearly suffered as a result of that. And then Ricardo came along and kind of upset the upper cart a little bit and beat Seb and Seth decided to switch to Ferrari, so we never really got to see what would have happened if that, if that pairing stayed together for longer. And then uh, Max came along, and Ricardo could feel that he was no longer the number one driver in the team as the team started to shift its focus towards Verstappen and decided to go to Renault. And I think he did that knowing that at some point they would make him subservient to Verstappen and he didn't want that and I think he jumped before that happened and saw the opportunity to you know become the established number one at Renault and that just didn't really work for for him I mean just because it's Renault Renault haven't really been a force for a long long time and we all know what happened when he went to McLaren the car just wasn't suited to him at all um, but since then anyone who's got in the car with Verstappen has struggled uh, because the team has naturally just developed a car that seems to be very happy uh, very very good for Verstappen and nobody else Albon talented young driver His career kind of almost went off the rails when he went to, uh, to partner up with Verstappen. Before that was Gasly. Gasly's career just went into free fall when he was alongside him. Uh, Kvyat, same as well. Perez has, has lasted longer. He's an older, more experienced driver. But he's succumbed to that same kind of pressure now. And, uh, yeah, it's... I think it's just a little bit too much pressure. Right, we are due to stop in, what, five laps? Let's start turning these tires up a touch. We can push one more step on tires. Copy. Reese has got Norris all over the back of him. And he's been holding him back so far. So 
sounds like there are slight differences with the cars. What, with the Red Bulls? Mm, no, not so much. It's just the way the concept has evolved. Is a, it, it suits the Staffan's driving style, and the Staffan's driving style is a style that is not very common among the uh, among the grid. Uh, the closest style you could compare the Staffans to would be Schumacher's, Michael Schumacher's. Uh, Ricardo has shades of that style as well, but not to the same degree as Max. Which is why I think you know Ricardo will actually do quite well in the Red Bull because you know, he kind of likes a car with a, a, a quite a pointy front end and, and quite a loose rear end. Um, but Max can take that to a whole nother level. You know that's that's Max's specialty. You know, and then there's very few drivers in in the world in in the history of Formula One who've been able to drive that style as consistently and as uh, what's the word I'm searching for supremely I suppose as, as Max does so it's not that there's a difference in the cars themselves it's just that the way the car's set up you know, the way the car has evolved suits clearly suits Max and doesn't really suit uh, Jacko that's why we've seen these periods where Checo has struggled. Because the car just doesn't talk to him the same way it talks to Max. And that's partly down to natural talent, because Max is supremely talented. But it's also down to just the way the car behaves. Um, if you've got to develop a car that your number two driver is comfortable, is really happy with, but you're you know, your talented world champion driver is not so comfortable with or not so happy with are you going to go in that direction or are you going to go with the direction that keeps your world champion happy and your number two not so much but doesn't matter if you're number two hope when we get these softs on we can suddenly find another couple of seconds of lap otherwise we are in real <laughs> trouble for the rest of this race Perez has peaked and Max is the master at this moment in time in F1 well yes Perez has definitely peaked you know there are only a couple of drivers who've been able to maintain you know the highest level that late into the career one of them is Hamilton and even Hamilton's shown signs of vulnerability uh, to that more recently uh, and Alonso and again Alonso has made some mistakes recently this season you know the odd you get ah oh, talking of mistakes immediately we trigger a locket from Nick DeVries weren't talking about you Nick <laughs> Max could potentially win more than Schumacher and Hamilton if Red Bull stay top until 2026. Um, take more than that. Norris would suit the Red Bull car. Uh, potentially, yeah. Potentially.
Box, box. Copy, box. Stay close to the cars in front. have uh, a nice clean quick stop here and then see what we can do on the set of socks bring the pack up yeah copy that big lift now copy oh, yeah. copy that Yeah, was Norris on mediums nine laps old yesterday before the red flag and restart? Uh, not sure. Oh god, we're about to get laps. Come on, get out quick, 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 quick. Ah, gonna get laps. Okay, deployment should be good. Yeah, copy that. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Oh, well. Yeah. Use it, Copy that. No saving required. Copy that. So focus on bringing the tyres down. Copy that. All right, hopefully, I can stay close to Maxwell on more than the tyres. Yeah, it was Norris on those mediums. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I only saw highlights, so I didn't know uh, not the full race. So I'm not entirely sure what the tyre situation was with Norris you know, going into the restart. Evening, Anthony. Oh, that's a good stop. 2.39. Oh, that's a very good stop. That will keep Yuki in clean air. De Vries hadn't locked up. He wouldn't have uh, got himself in a position where he was going to get lapped like that, so it's frustrating. Okay, let's go. Charge off. Okay. And slow down, Yuki. Slow down. Okay. Push a bit more. Copy that. Ah, thank you for the uh, tyre clarification, my man. Let's go flat out, flat out. Okay. We just couldn't quite get there. But we are in the DRS now. Just going to harvest it, slow the tyres down, we and we'll stay on, on the, the back of uh, Verstappen. At the very least, that might help us catch a couple of the cars in front if we don't have that outright pace. Can we just take it easy on the straight? Yeah, A for Could we sneak a fastest lap here? We've already got it actually with debris, so just notice that. Yuki's got it now. 
I don't think anyone's going to beat that. <laughs> Not unless we get like a, a red flag or something. In which case, everyone's going to throw on softs. There's more lift off towards the tyres. Yellow flag. That's the first yellow flag we've had, actually. I think. Oh, Sergeant's locked up. Let's take a closer look. That was right behind us. Here we, we are. Completely We're missed it. At turn 11. The brakes couldn't cope. Just unable to control the car by that point. You're gonna have to give me an now TV sign in. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't have Sky. Um, Okay. And, you know, I'm not paying, like, £15 or whatever it is to, you know, for 24 hours to watch a race. And it's just ridiculous. So I just wait till the highlights go on Channel 4 and then, you know, watch the, uh, watch them once they go up on all four. On. So I watched them at, like, half past three in the morning this morning. Seconds a lap faster than Albon. Two and a half seconds faster than Hulkenberg and Norris. And Magnussen. Maybe. How fast is Gasly? We're not fast enough to catch Gasly. Uh, oh, we're, we're slowing down a bit. Oh, damn it, I meant to try and push to get past on this and lap. energy is available. Got it. Let's see if we can maybe jump him here. Yes, we can. Right, let's see if we can stay ahead of Max or if we're going to get blue flagged again. Now to reset the new fastest lap. Wow. <laughs> Just get Debris to break check Max. Well, that's not going to do me any good. <laughs> All it's going to do is just total another one of my cars. Oh, 
Right, we do have about three, four, five tenths of pace over max, which is kind of what I figured we would have, so that's good. Uh, we're still lapping quicker than the cars in front. Uh, very slow lap from Norris. Can he just get lapped? No, but he is in a, he is in a fight with Albon. Magnussen had a slow lap as well. If they can keep lapping in the 119s like that, and we can close by nearly two seconds a lap. It's not impossible for us to maybe get something out of this Grand Prix. You know, like, and by that I mean 11th. <laughs> uh, points are just beyond us again, unfortunately. You know, Gas is too far ahead, he's too quick. Uh, even though, and he, even though he's not on the back of another car, in clean air, he's still lapping at about the same pace that Sonoda is doing right now, if not slightly quicker. problem when you <laughs> when you get lucky and score points early on <laughs> you just let, you get so disappointed when you can't challenge for points again after that Two seconds on Albon that lap. Should dive out of the way in a second. Maybe on the approach to Tosa. There we go. Yellow flag. Oh, lock it for Ocon. Right, let's pick this up as we go into turn How 14. How big was this? Struggling with the car. And hopefully there's not too much damage to the tyres. Uh, drops in behind his teammate. I got thrown for a second because I saw the McLaren go through and I thought, I know this isn't that far up the field. And I realised it must be Piastri getting lapped. Because we're right behind Nor uh, Norris right now. is vulnerable. Let's 
get this moved on quickly. Copy. Nice little confidence boost for Sonoda there. Push on. try and interject myself into the middle of that fight without a little bit of battery. Reese is closing in on the back of Norris soon as well. He's not going to climb up massively. Might be able to get past Hulkenberg if he's lucky. know that if we can get him past Albon quickly then we've get, got maybe a chance to go after Magnussen yep. but you know we've got to get past Albon and Hulkenberg pretty quick so that's Albon there and that is peak confidence Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good job, Yuki. P13, Yuki. P13. Talk about moving under braking. My God, how many times is Hulkenberg going to change direction there? Up. <laughs> Thank you, Hockenberg. <laughs> I was just thinking to myself, we haven't had a Hockenberg fuck up since uh, since Jeddah, and there we go, we've got another Hockenberg fuck up. <laughs> Charge. In fact, he's now behind De Vries by nearly six seconds. That's how much time he lost. They're looking good now. So, Magnussen up next, and we're only laughing. Well, difficult for Sonoda on that last lap, had to lift a little bit because of the big Hulkenberg mistake. But assuming he's lapping about the same pace as the Vries, then that means we're going to be lapping about one and a half seconds a lap faster than Magnussen, so we've got enough time to catch him. We're ten seconds off.
Perez is starting, sorry, not Perez, Verstappen starting to edge up onto the back of us again. I think. Nothing about the same, just actually we were 4,000 quicker than Verstappen on that last lap with the Bruce. But he is the car that's directly behind us on track. There he is. He does feel like he's getting closer. Oh yeah, yeah, we did a 184 last lap. So 1.3 seconds off the back of Magnussen on that lap. That's that's doable. If we can keep that pace going, maybe even find a bit more. Definitely doable. Where did Albon come from? suddenly appeared behind us. done on Norris. You've got energy. Good job, Nick. Up to 14th. Right, Albon is as far as he's going to go. Can we get him onto Albon? Or have we run out of tyres now? We might have run out of tyres. Not yet, it's available. Not yet, it's available. You can lift off to avoid instability. Six laps to go. Six laps, six okay. seconds, it's going to be tight. Recharge. We can just focus on charging the pack. Just run out of tyres. Eight tenths of a second that lap, it's not enough. We need a bit more than that.
Come on, Nick. You got this. is coming up to the line. Let's see what he does. 119.2, Yuki does. 118.0, that's enough. We need more of that. And the Brees is a second quicker than Albon. Three laps to go, well, four laps for us, unless we get lapped by Max. Norris has been lapped. He's dropped out of contention for us now to worry about. Can we get Albon before we get caught by Max? Four seconds off the back of Magnussen. I don't have anything left to, to, to really give him. Nothing left in terms of tyres. Got no spare fuel, got nothing in the way of battery. It's all down to you, Yuki. I can't help you on that one. Used energy. Focus on bringing the pack back up. To go. That's not enough. We only took half a second. There is a yellow flag. I don't know what that's for. Ocon again with a mistake. Now here we're taking turn six. And nearly. Oh, just that's running not too wide. Bad. And he Barely really cost him can't... any time at all. And he's way too far ahead for that to have any impact on us. I think. Sonoda's going to have to settle for 12th, but can we get De Vries into 13th? We've got a little bit of battery. I'd like to save that if at all possible. I'm going to use it here. See so if we can actually get into that use DRS it. zone at the end of this lap. Give us a chance. All right, we're in range just. He's not closing fast enough. I need Magnuson to make a mistake. I'll give him what I've got, which isn't a lot. We need to focus on the energy now. Verstappen over the finish line yeah. and today's winner. Use energy. 
Go on, have a lunge, have a lunge. Uh, up the hill, maybe. Yuki was closing, and for a second I thought he might get him. And here we go, here's a chance. Oh, we're side by side, tyres are gone. Just hang on, hang on, Nick, come on. You got this, son, you got this, you got this. Ah, damn it. Rat battery, that's it. It's over. Make sure he finishes. Big lift now. Yeah, it was close. It was a valiant effort, but just couldn't quite. Just ran out of tyres at the last second. 12th and 14th, that's not too bad. It's not quite the points I was hoping we might be able to sneak, but in the end, yeah, 17 seconds off points. Valtteri Bottas there, coming back to the team now. It's a P18 finish, and let me assure you, no one wants to find themselves down there. Well, Max Verstappen can add yet another podium to his already impressive record. Win number five is in the bag. They pulled out all the stops, pushing hard to earn that victory. Well, Formula One certainly feels at home in Italy, and it looks like those three feel right at home too. It's kind of depressing for Stroll that a video game adaptation of him is more successful than he is. <laughs> Down there in the Alpha Tauri garage, Karoo, what would they be making of that race, do you think? Well, it was a bit of a mixed bag here. Some things went their way, but others didn't. I think their main target now will be finding some consistency for sure. And that's about it for our time here in Imola. For the next Grand Prix, make sure you join us at the renowned city circuit of Monaco. Prepare yourselves for one of the most legendary rounds of the season. Ah, it's hard when you're racing and there's nothing to play for. Although we did sneak the fastest lap, so uh, although we won't get a point for it because we didn't finish in the top 10, we will get the sponsor money, which is always important. Uh, so, looking at the bottom of the grid, you can see Joe last, then Piastri, way off the pace. Uh, then Bottas, and then Sargent, Hulkenberg, Norris up two places, De Vries gained a place off the line, uh, Albon up three places, Sonoda finishing where he started in 12th, Magnussen dropping a couple of places, and then into the top 10, uh, we've got Ocon, ahead, and then Gasly, uh, Hamilton up two places as well, uh, Russell starts and finishes in 7th, Bad race for Sites. His early pace just dropped away and he drops down four places to finish in sixth. Leclerc also dips a place to finish in fifth. It's uh, a good weekend for Aston Martin. Uh, both drivers gaining two places from where they started. Fernando in fourth, Lance getting on the podium for third, and it's Max ahead of Perez for the win. Let's take a look at the Drivers' Championship. So Max, with 25 points, stretches his lead over Checo a little bit further. He's now 38 points clear. Alonso, in third place, uh, is now 10 points clear of Leclerc and is within 18 points of Checo. In fourth place, uh, Leclerc, as we saw, uh, has been caught a little bit by Stroll, but is still pretty comfortable uh, ahead of him. Uh, Sainz missing the opportunity to get some decent points he uh he loses out seven points to stroll and stays behind actually uh now eight points to gap as opposed to just one hamilton four points for him uh, not a great weekend for mercedes in general just 10 points for both their drivers uh, they're on 40 and 33 in the championship two more points for gasly sees him in ninth place sonoda hanging on to 10th which is fantastic and ocon is uh, now level on points with Sonoda, but Ocon hasn't got um, the same highest finish as uh, Sonoda, I think, or Sonoda's done it more times, uh, which is why he is higher up overall. Maybe it's the fastest laps, I'm not sure. Uh, 
Magnussen in 12th. De Vries stays in 13th. Albon gains a place, having not scored, but on positions. Uh, and he jumps over Norris as a result. And there's still quite a few drivers yet to score any points. Let's take a look at the constructors. Uh, 43 points for Red Bull. Sees them up to 258. They're 108 points clear of Aston Martin in second place. That's already a big gap after just six races. Very big gap. Ferrari in third. Not really able to map much of a challenge this weekend and that sees them 18 points now behind Aston Martin uh, be interesting to see if they can come back in Monaco which is our next Grand Prix Mercedes will probably do a little bit better at Monaco they usually are a little bit better at circuits with low speed cornering uh, we shall see Alpine gaining three more points uh, sees them staying fifth but they're a long way off the back of Mercedes they're 50 points off uh, we stay in eighth place, sorry, in sixth place with our eight points. We're still comfortably ahead of Haas and Williams, who move up to eighth, thanks to Albon's position. Uh, McLaren and drop to ninth, Alfa Romeo in tenth. Those bottom three still yet to score any points. Let's take a look at the pit stop challenge. And we got the quickest stop. Wow. Yuki Tsunoda's 2.399 was the quickest stop of the day. That's awesome. That's 25 big points for us. Unfortunately, De Vries is times were not quick enough to get into the top 10 but uh, I'll take those 25 points thank you very much so that moves us up to fourth in the standings as we uh, leapfrog over Mercedes that is very very nice indeed Aston Martin also jumped over Williams with 14 points and it's tightened up again at the top between Red Bull and Ferrari four points between the two teams now uh, that's going to be an interesting fight as that continues. And maybe we can start to uh, take some points off the big boys. If we can start doing those 2.3 second stops a bit more consistently. What was De Vries' fastest stop? Oh, they were both 2.7. Yeah, not great stops for him. So a bit of work to do in terms of consistency for our team. Uh, we're working on time, but we're not working on the skill much. So that's probably why we're seeing... Uh, a bit of variation in our times and not a lot of you know consistent you know uh, times that are all within a couple you know a couple of hundredths of each other so uh, in terms of our drivers this afternoon five overtakes and seven failed overtakes for Nick DeVries 11 successful defenses did not get overtaken good job Nick DeVries or did not give, uh, get overtaken in a position where he couldn't defend uh, where, where he could have defended. Uh, let's take a look at Yuki. Seven overtakes, eight failed, nine defences, and four failed. So not a bad afternoon for our drivers. And of course, we did get a little bit more experience for Liam Lawson as well. That will help his development. Maybe going to be in with a shout of a seat next year. We shall see. And thanks to that fastest lap and the fact that we hit... Our targets, our guarantees of our finish position and our Q3, uh, Q2 and our quality position targets, we ended up with $2.7 million. That's very nice. Very nice indeed. That fastest lap worth uh, $224,000. I will take that every, every day. All right, helipad is fully upgraded. We have 3.2 mil in the bank. And Monaco is just four days away. So we are going to call it a night right here. Uh, this will be it for uh, tonight's stream. I will be back with uh, Monaco tomorrow night, usual time, 8 p.m. UK time. And I will try and get a couple of videos of Robocop up at some point over the next day or two as well so that you guys can can see some of that before it actually goes live on the second see if it is something that you might want to get uh, and you'll be able to try it out you know through through me i suppose and uh, and get a feel and flavor for some gameplay of the game before it, uh, it does go live on the second so uh hope you've enjoyed tonight's race if you have please uh, drop a like on it and uh, you know, if you are new to the channel and you want to keep up to date with the uh, with the races then just Go ahead and click subscribe you'll get a notification 
uh, when I go live, which is uh, most nights of the week, you know, Monday to Friday, uh, and we stream a race pretty much every night of the week. So, yeah, hope to see you all again soon. And I will see you all tomorrow for Monaco. Bye for now.